Hi, I'm Jeannie Dubon, a movement therapist who specialises in hypermobility and EDS. And I'm delighted to create this video for the CSF Leak Association. Um, it's going to be a 20 minute class thereabouts um, to give us some very gentle movements to help us while we're suffering um, and coping with our CSF leaks. Um, now obviously look after yourselves, this class is going to be very gentle, it's going to be a movement meditation as opposed to a sort of an exercise class. I understand that having a leak can be extremely painful, it can be extremely stressful living with this condition and so we're going to be very gentle. What we're going to do is really do some embodiment movement and really start to connect with our bodies in a different way. Um, if anything doesn't feel right for your body um, today, then please skip that particular exercise and do what feels right for you at the time. So don't do anything that increases your pain or makes you feel worse or makes you feel like you're increasing that pressure. Really important that we don't increase our abdominal pressure, so we're not going to be doing any abdominal type work because we don't want to increase that internal pressure. So, what we're going to be doing, we're going to do the whole class lying down. So you can do this in bed as well. Get yourself comfy, make sure you've got enough cushions or however you want to feel comfortable in your um, lying down position. If you need to prop yourself up a little bit, Obviously, do whatever feels right for you. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and lie down. If you need a blanket to keep yourself warm, grab that as well. And let's get ourselves really comfortable in bed or on the mat, wherever you're doing this today. Now, some people might like to put a sort of a bolster or some cushions under the back of their knees. So you can really let the legs relax as well at this stage. Um, if it's comfortable, you can have your legs straight, you can have them bent. I'm going to keep mine bent. You can even let your knees roll in towards each other so they rest against each other if that's comfortable as well. Okay. So once you're settled in and your head feels supported, go ahead and close your eyes. So as we said, living with this condition can be very stressful, can be very tiring. So we're going to do some calming, gentle awareness work to help calm the nervous system down, help us feel a little bit more relaxed, a little bit more present. So with the eyes softly closed, just let the tongue rest on the roof of your mouth. Don't push it into the mouth, just let it rest. And see if you can soften your jaw. So I'm going to suggest some things today. It kind of invite your body to try different things. And just see what sort of reaction you have. So if I invite you to soften your jaw. Soften the base of your tongue. You might find that that gives you some release around sort of the jaw, the back of the neck. So start to notice the back of your body, start to feel the contact that you're making with the ground or with your bed. So can you feel the back of your pelvis? Can you feel the back of your ribs? Can you feel the back of your head? And we don't ever want to push or force ourselves to feel these things. We just want to bring awareness to those areas. See if you can become more consciously aware of them. So when we pay attention to something, we become more aware of it. So just place your hands on your pelvis, so your hip bones. Just so you've got a bit of tactile feedback and see if you can send all your attention into the pelvis. So can you become aware of the bony structure of the pelvis, the density of the pelvis. 
How does the back of your pelvis feel? Do you feel balanced through your pelvis? And of course, there are no right or wrong answers. Everyone here will be having a different experience to somebody else. But we can often hold a lot of tension around the pelvis, around the hip joints, around the glutes. So let's invite ourselves to soften the pelvis. What does that mean for you? Can you soften the pelvis? Can you feel the weight of your own pelvis into the ground? Just take a moment to continue to feel the depth and the softness within the pelvis. And then as you travel up from your pelvis, coming into your waist, to the back of your waist, can you feel or sense the back of your waist touching the ground? And you don't push it down, just let it rest. And then can we experience the deep softness inside the thorax, inside the rib cage? Can you find softness here? Obviously we have a lot of organs in here, we have our lungs, our heart. Can they soften as well? Can we rest? our rib cage on the floor. A lot of us hold tension, especially if you're, you know, you've been under stress, the rib cage, the shoulders, the neck, a lot of places where we hold tension. So can we invite the rib cage to soften? You might find you can feel the back of your shoulder blade resting on the floor. Again, don't push your shoulder blade into the ground. Just let it rest on the floor, if it's touching the floor. If it's not, that's fine too. So our conscious mind is drawn into the back of the body, the back of the ribs, the back of the waist, the back of the pelvis. Can you notice the breath very soft? So if we soften the body, can we soften the breath? If you're able to inhale through your nose, can you do that very quietly? So that the breath feels like it's just gently touching the lining of the lungs. It's like a very fine brush just gliding over the inside of your lungs. No force, no pressure, just very gentle. And then the breath just leaves through the nose if you can. If you can't, obviously mouth breathing is okay. So we gently let the breath come in, very gently. And we feel that gentle brushing of the inside of the rib cage. And then that lovely softening as the breath leaves. Let's do that one more time. Feel the breath coming in, very quiet. Brushing the inside of your ribs and then softly leaving. So just let the breath fade away into the background. It will still be there, just let it fade away. Bring your attention back into your physical body, the weight of your body on the bed, on the mat. And we're just going to bring one hand. So keep your elbow on the ground. Just bring one arm so the forearm is vertical. The elbow stays on the ground. Palm is facing inwards. You can keep your eyes closed. 
And I want you to, without moving your shoulder, without moving your arm, to start to draw circles with your wrist. So clockwise, whatever you decided to do, clockwise or anti-clockwise, just go with what you feel. So can I circle? Now I'm looking at doing this really quietly. So let your fingers be quiet. And just slowly circle the wrist. Obviously, if you have hypermobility as well, you're going to just make sure you're not going too big here. So keep it nice and controlled. Is the pelvis still resting while you do this? And then start to make those wrist circles even smaller. Very, very quiet. And even moving the wrist like this is going to be having an impact in freeing up the shoulders, which is amazing. Because everything is connected. So how does that feel, drawing a very small wrist circle? So we're calling this movement meditation because we're really paying attention to those fine movements. So let's go the other way. So clockwise, anti-clockwise, whichever one you chose. So we'll start off big. Just see how it feels. Can you stay aware of the back of your body as you do this? And we start to make those circles smaller and smaller. Keep the jaw soft, no tension in the jaw. And then just find stillness. So let your wrist rest. Just notice how it feels. And then slowly lower that down so it's back on the ground. Oh, sorry, on your belly. And just lift the other wrist up. So we'll rotate the other arm. And actually, let's just bring the other arm back up too. So both forearms are pointing up at the ceiling. But I want you to feel the difference between whichever arm you've moved and whichever arm you haven't. So just pay attention to that. You probably chose your favourite arm first. I don't think I told you which arm to use. So probably we all chose our favourite easier side. So let's start moving the other one. You can leave the other hand there unless you really need to rest it down. That's fine. And we'll just start circling again. Does it feel different? No, try and do this without any judgment. Just enjoy inviting movement into the wrist. Obviously, we're moving the forearm as well. And as I said, we are actually going to be helping release shoulder tension as well. So little things like this can actually impact the upper back and the release of tension. So it's very useful. So making that slowly smaller and smaller. Remember, we want this very quiet. So what do I mean by quiet? I mean, can you do this with the least amount of effort? Keep scanning your body and see if you're trying to tense up and do this by using other muscles. Can you keep it quiet? And then we'll go the other way. So make it smaller. Try not to use the fingers too much. And then come to stillness. If it's comfortable, bring the other hand up too. So both arms are, both forearms are now vertical. <clears throat> Belly is soft. Pelvis is heavy. Just notice how both arms feel. And then we're going to try and move both at the same time. So we're going to start circling both. Into this 
so different. Is it easier doing both? Make them smaller and smaller. And then go the other way. Keep checking in if that pelvis is still heavy. Are you still breathing? Are the ribs still heavy? Invite softness into your body, invite it. Let your spine rest. And then just come to stillness again. Notice how both arms feel. And then let the arms just rest down for a moment. Okay, now. We're going to, if you've got your legs straight, that's fine, you can keep them straight. If you've had your legs bent, you're gonna just slide one leg out along the floor if you don't like having both legs um, straight. I'm just gonna slide up a little bit so you can see my foot there. Okay, so hands can stay where they are. I'm gonna just do the same with my ankles. So I'm gonna to start to circle, so this is really important. So try not to move the toes, try and just move your ankle in those anti-clockwise or clockwise direction. So if we've been sort of supine in bed, resting quite a long time, because obviously that's what we need to do when we have the leak, um, we need to still move the calf pump, because in your calf you have a pump that pumps the blood up the legs to the heart. And obviously, if we're not moving our legs too much, then that can get a little bit tight, a little bit sticky. So doing simple ankle circles every day can actually be really useful. Start to make your circles smaller. Remember, least amount of muscular effort. And then start to go the other way. So again, maybe you chose your favourite arm, oh sorry, favourite leg first. Can you make it smaller? Can you invite a smaller movement into the ankle? And then just come to stillness. Just see how that feels. Maybe you feel the sensation all the way up into your hip. Because just by circling the ankle, you will have affected the tissue all the way up into your hip. So if you're not having both legs straight, you're going to swap over, slide the other leg away. Okay, I'll just get my foot out of the way so you can see. And let's see what the other side feels like. So we start to circle. Very mindful movement. So again, I'm checking that I'm still breathing. I'm checking that I feel the weightiness of my body into the floor. Might have some clicking in my ankles if I've been sedentary. I haven't moved my ankles. Don't be surprised if you hear some clicks going on. Okay, and then just go the other way. So again, maybe you're feeling that your calf muscle feels quite tight. Yeah, again, that would be normal if you haven't been able to walk for long distances, you know, being upright, obviously being a challenge. So it would be normal. So I encourage you to, you know, move your feet, move your ankles as much as you can. Good. And then just find stillness. So if it's comfortable, again, you can always put... Um, pillows under your legs if this isn't comfortable having your legs straight so support yourself if you need to but we're just going to let both legs be straight and I'm just going to slide as though I've got my heels in some custard I'm going to point and flex now really important keep this small we don't want the pelvis moving so I'm not sort of moving my pelvis as I move my ankles I'm keeping Ankles stay on the floor, back of heels are rubbing a hole in the bed or in the carpet. And again, you're just trying to move <clears throat> that calf pump. And then find stillness and just gently let the legs roll out to the side. So external rotation, 
and then roll them in, internal rotation. Obviously, if you've got hippy issues, obviously be uh, mindful of that. Keep your bottom on the ground, obviously, and just, again, because if we're not moving, if we're not walking, we don't want our hips to become too stiff. So gentle rotation of the thigh bones in the sockets. Again, very quiet. So can you think of just moving the bones? Forget the muscles. If you didn't have any muscles, how would you move your bones? Can you move your bones very quietly? Very soft. Can you just move the bone? That's it. Good. So you're going internal rotation, external rotation. We're going to stay in external rotation, pillows under knees if we need to, knees bent if we need to. Find a comfortable position and let's just relax, close our eyes, put your hands wherever you would like. So by doing some simple extremity movements, we will have moved the tissue in the hips, in the shoulders. Yeah, so we've got blood flowing, we've got some fluidity in the joints. It's going to make us feel better. It's going to feel, make us feel less stiff in those joints. So just take a moment now to again feel the support through the back of the body as you rest. Make sure you're warm enough. As you just let your body melt and soften into the ground, into the bed. Let your attention be drawn to the back body. If you're noticing tension anywhere else, just see if you can allow that to let go. For no judgment. Come back to your quiet breath, gently brushing the insides of the ribs. Very soft breath. We don't need to take big, powerful breaths as lying down. We don't need to take big, strong breaths. Very gentle breath. You can obviously stay here for as long as you like, enjoying the weightiness of your bones on the ground, letting your body have some rest and restoration. If you want to come back into the room, next time you exhale, just allow your eyes to softly open. Come back into the room. Notice how that feels. Soft eyes, even your eyes can be soft. So that you're not straining your eye muscles too much. Very good. So I'm slowly going to come up. You can stay, as I say, stay for as long as you need to on the ground. So I do hope that was a gentle relaxing class um, that you can do anytime as I say in bed um, really treat it as a movement meditation it really helps calm the nervous system down but it just helps lubricate these joints as well as I say all the way up into the shoulders all the way up into the hips so it's really a class about the art of doing very little um, but it's actually very very beneficial um, very uh, nourishing for the body and the mind. So thank you for watching, thank you for taking part, 
and um, again my name is Jeannie Dubon and I look forward to seeing you again soon.